In the last few months, Starship's testing campaign has been moving at a pace we've rarely seen before. After years of trial and error, SpaceX has finally reached a point where both booster and ship are completing key milestones in quick succession. From static fires to full-stack rehearsals, the launch site in Boca Chica has been busier than ever, showing clear signs that the company is shifting from experimental flights to something closer to operational rhythm. Each test has been designed to fix issues from earlier missions, whether it's heat shield durability, stage separation, or recovery systems, and every step has been building toward the next big launch. Now, with those pieces starting to fall into place, all eyes are back on the pad. Engineers have been putting the booster through its final checks, and the latest test may be the most important one yet. It's the kind of milestone that tells us SpaceX isn't just testing hardware anymore. They're preparing for something much larger. The question is no longer if the next Starship flight is coming soon, but how quickly they're trying to make it happen. Before we dive into all of that, make sure to subscribe if you want updates on Starship's progress. Hit the bell so you don't miss when the next big step is announced. Over the past year, Starship has gone from experimental first flights to a steady rhythm of testing that shows real progress. Each mission has been more ambitious than the last, by proving individual systems and also exposing weaknesses that needed to be solved before routine launches could even be considered. Flight 8 demonstrated that a booster could return and survive most of its burn, while Flight 9 pushed stage separation further than ever before. Then came Flight 10, which set a new bar by achieving a near-flawless ascent, demonstrating better hot staging performance, and collecting a huge amount of data on re-entry. Taken together, these flights have transformed Starship from a prototype into a system that looks closer and closer to an operational vehicle. What stands out even more is the pace at which SpaceX is moving. In the Falcon 9 program, quick turnarounds became the foundation of reusability, but Starship is being developed under even more aggressive timelines. After Flight 10, the booster for the next mission was already at the pad in less than two weeks. That kind of turnaround is something we haven't seen before in the program's history. It signals that SpaceX is now treating every campaign as part of a much larger pipeline, where boosters, ships, and pad operations are all running in parallel. Another layer to this story is the hardware itself. The boosters now being tested are reused units, which adds a whole new dimension to the campaign. Instead of retiring or scrapping boosters after a single flight, engineers are inspecting them, reinforcing weak points, and preparing them to fly again. This is exactly what turned Falcon 9 into the world's most reliable rocket, and Starship is now entering the same phase. Each reused booster brings back lessons from its earlier flight. Which engines need reinforcement? how structural components handle the stress of launch, and whether recovery systems can be trusted for repeat operations. With every cycle, SpaceX gathers the knowledge it needs to make Starship powerful and more practical. Meanwhile, pad operations have become a critical piece of the puzzle. Pad 1 at Starbase has been pushed to its limits over the course of 10 flights, handling static fires, full-stack tests, and repeated launches under extreme conditions. The water-cooled steel plate under the orbital mount, the chopstick arms, and the detonation suppression system were all innovations designed to keep the pad alive long enough to support these early missions, and despite some setbacks, they've worked well enough to allow testing to continue almost nonstop. But the strain on these systems is clear. And upgrades are becoming essential if SpaceX wants to scale operations beyond the current level. At the same time, Starship's broader future depends on far more than one pad in Texas. Construction has been racing ahead on additional launch sites, including Pad 2 at Starbase and new facilities in Florida. These expansions are backups and also a part of a deliberate plan to spread out operations, reduce risk, and prepare for the pace needed to support deep space missions. The vision is simple. Multiple pads, multiple vehicles, all flying regularly without long gaps. Every step taken today, whether it's a booster turnaround or a static fire test, is part of that larger picture. And it's within this accelerating pace that the next breakthrough has just taken place. And the moment that confirmed everything came when Booster 15 was rolled onto the orbital launch mount earlier this month. It showed that the vehicle was ready for full-scale pad operations and that the teams were wasting no time lining up the next campaign. 
Preparations began immediately, with the transport stand cleared from the pad and the support hardware repositioned around the mount. From the outside, it looked like the same process we've seen before each major test, but the difference this time was how quickly the sequence unfolded. Within hours, signs of fueling rehearsals began, with liquid oxygen venting visible from the tanks and frost bands forming on the booster's massive structure. As the countdown progressed, everything pointed to a full static fire. The chopstick arms lifted clear, the quick disconnect lines retracted, and water began pouring into the flame trench. Then came the surge that every SpaceX watcher was waiting for. More than 30 engines lit up in unison, producing an ear-splitting roar and sending vibrations through the ground for miles. Over 7,000 tons of thrust hammered against the pad for a controlled burn that lasted around eight seconds. Cameras shook, shockwaves rolled across the site, and for a brief moment, the booster demonstrated the raw power it was built for. When the engines shut down, SpaceX confirmed what everyone already suspected. The test was a success. The importance of this static fire goes far beyond the sound and spectacle. It proved that Booster 15, a reused vehicle, could perform at full strength after being through an earlier flight. It also showed that the pad systems, despite their age and heavy use, could still handle the extreme loads of another major firing. Engineers will now comb through the data, but the early signs suggest that every system worked as intended. The fueling lines, the suppression system, the ignition sequence, and the shutdown procedure all ran smoothly without any unexpected issues. This kind of clean result is exactly what SpaceX needed to greenlight the next step. Once the firing ended, the pad moved quickly back into post-test operations. Local road closures were announced for the booster's eventual return to the production site, where it will undergo detailed inspections. This inspection phase is critical because Booster 15 already carries a flight history. Engineers will check the center ring engines that showed trouble on Flight 8, as well as other parts that experienced stress during ascent and landing. At the same time, they'll install the final pieces of flight hardware, including the hot staging ring and the flight termination system. The timeline that is now emerging points directly to a launch this month. If inspections reveal no major issues, Ship 38 could be rolled to the pad within days. It still needs to complete its own engine tests, but those are already scheduled. If those milestones run smoothly, the full stack could be ready for launch toward the end of the month. Some watchers predict a date around the 29th, although the exact timing will depend on weather, regulatory approvals, and the results of final testing. There is also a symbolic weight to this moment. Flight 11 is likely to be the last mission ever launched from Pad 1 in its current form. Pad 2 is nearly complete and designed for the upgraded V3 version of Starship, which means the existing launch mount and water-cooled plate will soon be retired. Pad 1 has carried the entire program from its first integrated tests through 10 historic flights, and it will host one final booster before being torn down for a full rebuild. For many, this static fire felt like a farewell, marking the end of the pad's first era. After Flight 11, it will undergo heavy upgrades, including a flame trench system, stronger chopsticks, and a redesigned orbital mount to match the demands of the new vehicles. So the successful firing of Booster 15 is the final proof that Starship's early infrastructure can carry one more flight closing out a chapter that began years ago when the program was still experimental. Now, the countdown shifts toward Flight 11, the mission that will bridge the old phase of testing with the new era of rapid, reusable, and more powerful launches. The test has shown that everything is in place. The only thing left is the launch itself.